Well, as we promised you, we have a guest speaker, or uh, more than one guest speaker each week. Uh, this week is going to be the management department. And as you know, we've already talked about this, we have three majors inside the management department, the consulting major, the entrepreneurship major, and the information technology. Uh, the department, the new department chair, not Dr. Bretz, Dr. Bretz, if you've seen his picture, is the current chair, but uh, Dr. Cramp will be the new chair starting the fall semester. And then Dr. Easley will also, is the assistant chair, he's also going to talk. Dr. Cramp has been with us since 1990, uh, started as assistant professor, and, and now is going to be a, a full professor and the next department chair. Uh, Dr. Easley started in 94. So you have the senior faculty, I'm sure they like to appreciate it. You're with the senior faculty. But uh, you've got a lot of experience here, and they can give you some history of the department, as well as answer questions about the curriculum, and, and if you have questions in particular about what might be career opportunities based on these majors, this is your opportunity to ask those questions. With that, we'll go over to Dr. Craig. <coughs> Hi, good morning, everybody. Uh, management department at Notre Dame is unusual for most other departments. And what's unusual about it is that we're very, very broad. Uh, you know, like in history, everybody shares a common interest in the topic of history. Sure, some people focus on revolutionary period, others in ancient history, but they're still in history. We actually have at least five different scholarly areas that we study in, uh, in our department. So let me begin by just telling you a very uh, a little bit about what makes our department unique. One group of folks in our department, are, we are interested in studying human behavior and organizations. It's called organizational behavior and human resource management. That's things like uh, leadership. What, what does it mean to be a great leader? What do great leaders do that, that ineffective leaders don't do? Those types of questions. How do you motivate people? Another area that we study is strategy. How do companies decide which businesses to go into? How do companies decide when it's time to exit a business? How do companies decide the most effective way to compete? Some companies like Walmart, they make their money by being the low cost price leader. They buy as cheaply as they can and they sell as cheaply as they can while still making a profit. Other companies, uh, Bose is an example, try to charge a very big premium for their products. So uh, they're going on a quality strategy. What, what differentiates the two? How do you know? When to, when to enter and exit a business, and what types of strategies make the most sense. Uh, we also staff the statistics courses that our business majors take. It's a very rigid and structured way of thinking about analyzing data. Uh, my friend and colleague, uh, Professor Easley, is going to talk to you about the Information Technology Management Group. Information technology is a huge driver these days of business success, and every business administrator has to know something about how you capitalize on the advantages of information technology. Uh, we also have uh, groups of people who study small business in our department, entrepreneurship. And I, it's one of the majors I'll talk about in a few months. But, uh, but if you have a business idea, or if you're interested in going into a family business, that is a very attractive major for you. So we are indeed a very broad department. And we like to think of that as a strength of our department. Uh, we actually have a lot of the, the coverage in the college of the, the business administration disciplines. Basically, everything that's not accounting, finance, or marketing falls to us. And, and we think that's a unique viewpoint because we're a bit broader, perhaps, than, uh, than the viewpoints of some of the other departments in the college. That being said, we have three majors within the college. Those students that choose to, uh, to major in, in the management area can choose amongst consulting, entrepreneurship, and information technology management. I'm going to talk to you this morning, this afternoon, excuse me, about the first two of those, and Professor Easley is going to talk about, uh, about the latter. I want to start, though, with a disclaimer. I don't want you to turn off because you, you think, well, none of those three things interest me. I don't want to go to work for a consulting firm. I don't want to go to work for an information technology firm. And I don't want to own a small business. There is no law that says that you have to work in the field that you get your college degree in. I, I'm, I'm a prime example of somebody who's doing nothing that's even closely related to, uh, to my undergrad major. Uh, in this brochure I passed out, you'll see a list of, uh, of the types of companies that hire our, our majors and the types of job titles that they, they've had. 
it's not all consulting and entrepreneurship for the people that majored in consulting and entrepreneurship. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the classes that we offer. And one thing I hope you gain from this conversation is an appreciation of the fact that what we're really doing in the management department is giving you some vitally important skills to be successful business administrators. And while those skills certainly are very applicable to the world of consulting and the world of small business, I think they're also universally appreciated by business. So many of our majors, even our entrepreneurship majors, for example, they actually don't start businesses right after graduation. They have learned skills that are very valued in the marketplace, and so they can do whatever they want to do. One piece of advice I've, I've given over the years to students that have come to me and asked for advice about majors and placement and things like that is that I think you should make the decision about majors not based on your short-term views of the job market, but based on your heart, what interests you. One of the great things about being at a university, especially a great one like Notre Dame, is that you get exposed to very bright people who absolutely know the fields that they're teaching. And at some point, some of the classes are going to speak to you. And to me, it's more of a gut level thing I'm talking about here. It's not even you know, a rational analysis that you do and say, ah, oh, I should major in finance because that's where the money is. I'm trying to discourage you from that type of thinking. That's what I did when I was, uh, when I was your age, and it ended up being a mistake. At some point, one of the disciplines is going to speak to you. And my advice would be to major in that Enjoy it, learn what you can, and don't worry about the short-term implications in the labor market. Notre Dame is a great university, and our graduates never have problems getting jobs irrespective of their majors. All right, that being said, let me talk to you just a little bit about the types of courses that we offer here at Notre Dame in the management department and the specifics of the three majors. Uh, up across the top here, under management department, four requirements. That set of courses, those six courses, are required for all of our majors across the three concentrations. So entrepreneurship, consulting, and information technology majors will all complete these six <coughs> courses. Management communication. You've got to be persuasive to be successful in life. If you cannot make an argument cogently and passionately and convince others of the wisdom of your viewpoint, you're not going to go very far. This is an in-depth look at the techniques of skilled communicators. What do great communicators do? Effective speakers, what are their tricks? Effective writers, how do they communicate their thoughts more effectively? It is a very hands-on course with a lot of feedback. That's one of the strengths of this course. It's not just lecture. You actually give presentations, you write papers, and you get constructive criticism that will help you be more successful in your careers. Strategic information technology. Uh, Professor Easley is going to talk more in a moment about this area of our, our course, uh, our offerings. But uh, this particular course is of relevance for everyone. Information technology is such an important part of business today that I think everybody needs to have a fundamental understanding of some of the basic choices and issues that stem from the use of technology. What are some of the success stories? What are some stories of failure? What types of things have companies done where they've mismanaged information technology and perhaps minimized their success or maybe even gone out of business as a result of those types of decisions? This course addresses those types of issues. Innovation and design. One of the, uh, the things that differentiates business today from business of 20, 30 years ago is the rapid rate of change that businesses have to undergo in order to survive. It is such a dynamic, competitive environment. There's no such thing as staying still. Because if you're trying to stay still, maintain the status quo, your competitors are passing you by because they're not standing still. They're being innovative. To succeed today, even to survive today, you have got to be innovative. Those things that might work last week, they're probably outdated next week. This course is an in-depth look at this process of innovation. It's a different way of thinking. How can you be more creative? How can you break free of your old mindsets, your old ways of approaching problems, and truly be a source of innovative ideas to move your businesses forward? It's one of the most popular classes we have. 
Project management. You are going to be uh, responsible for many projects in your business lives. Some short term, some longer term. This class looks at the best practices of effective project management, some of the spreadsheet tools that you could use to, to be more effective in your project management duties, success stories, again, failure stories, you learn from the experiences of others. Spreadsheet decision modeling. A lot of business decisions are made based on a quantitative analysis of the data. And spreadsheets today are very powerful, especially with the add-in plugins that you can get. You can do all kinds of high-quality data analysis just using Microsoft Excel today. This is a class that, uh, that goes in more, more depth. You all know Excel, I'm sure, the basics. But this goes into much greater depth. How can you use spreadsheet tools to make better decisions? Finally, we have a core course called Business Problem Solving. I think at the core, everybody who works for a living gets paid because they make decisions. Everybody, I don't care what discipline you're in, accounting, finance, marketing, management, you make decisions. It's an area of study. We know an awful lot about the process that leads to good decisions and the process that leads to less effective decisions. This course helps you understand the difference between the two. What can you do to make higher quality decisions? And obviously, the better decisions you make at work, the higher up you're going to go. You get promoted based on your ability to make and implement high quality decisions. This class is, uh, is very hands-on, it's very project-based where you will read real-world case studies about important decisions businesses have made. You'll have to wrestle with the issues yourself, and come up with your own conclusions, and then you'll talk about what really happened in the process of that course. You'll learn an awful lot about how people make great decisions. Uh, now, this uh, second set of courses... Uh, you, I thought probably so. No, I got that. was the last one. Oh, you did talk yeah. about that. So this middle part, these are then four required courses that those of our majors who choose to focus on entrepreneurship as a concentration would be required to take. So in addition to the six courses I've just described, they would take those middle, uh, the middle four. Introduction to entrepreneurship, the basics. What do we know about the process of starting and running a small business? It's an overview of all of the various issues. Idea generation, financing, running an ongoing business, tax implications, a little bit of everything. Go to market. How can you translate your ideas to reality? A lot of people have great ideas for new products, new businesses, new services. But most, for most folks, it ends there. How can you turn your ideas into reality? That's the theme of the go to market course. What can you do to actually implement your ideas and start a business? Funding new ventures. Starting a new business is not cheap. And most of us don't have the financial resources to finance it ourselves, unfortunately. There are an awful lot of options for how you would finance a new business. And this course will make you aware of those options, and more importantly, allow you to understand the underlying financial dynamics that would maybe allow someone to say, yeah, I'm willing to fund your new venture. I'll help you out versus saying, no way, forget about it. So this course really takes a two-pronged approach, helping you understand the realities of financing new business and giving you information about how to present your business ideas in a way that people would be more willing to finance your business. Uh, finally, entrepreneurship, the business plan. This class uh, focuses, obviously, enough on the, the process of writing a business plan. That is one of the most valuable skills you can leave Notre Dame with. For all of these other things to come to reality, you have to write a strong business plan. It can't be long. It's got to be right to the point, concise, where somebody looks through a few pages and says, yep, this is a great idea. They've thought through the strengths and weaknesses of their idea. Uh, they've got a good idea for the, the, the cash flow. I'm going to give them money. A lot of people that can write a good business plan will always be in demand in the marketplace. So that's the entrepreneurship major. These elective courses at the bottom, I won't go into any detail. There is a specific course about family business strategy, though. If any of you are interested, perhaps, in joining a family business at some point, that's a wonderful course where we talk about those types of issues. So let's talk for a moment about the, uh, 
uh, consulting major that we have. This is the second of the three majors. Same set of six required courses, but now let's look at the, uh, the more specific courses required of our students who major in consulting. Uh, the first two, you would choose one of those. You would either take management competencies or human resource management. Uh, these are both courses at the micro level of management. It's about dealing with people. And business is getting things done through people. You very seldom spend a lot of time by yourself when you're in business. You've got to be able to persuade, to lead, to inspire. And both of these courses get at those types of issues. The difference between the two is that uh, the first one, management competencies, takes a bit of a broader, higher level view. The second one, uh, uh, human resources, looks at a more micro level view. Things like how can I pay you in such a way to increase your motivation? What's a better way to do a performance appraisal system to give you feedback to improve your performance? So they're both very relevant for any business administrator. International management. Anybody who graduates from Notre Dame is going to be a fast tracker. They will be, when, when a company hires that person, they will be on the fast track to the top. They will have been hired because the employing organization expects great things from them. Something that's different today from when I was your age is fast trackers today are expected to take an international assignment fairly early in their careers. It used to be unusual, now it is common. You will very likely be asked to prove that you can be an effective manager, financial administrator, accountant, whatever, not just in America, but somewhere else. You need to have the skills to be able to succeed, not just in the comfortable confines of the United States, but internationally. This course gives you an appreciation of the types of things that are associated with success in international business. Almost all businesses today are global. It's very rare for a business to operate solely in one country. And so this is absolutely a, a very vital point in your development as a business administrator. You need to have an understanding of some of the dynamics of international business. Finally, our consulting majors are required to take a course in leadership and motivation. Leadership is the art of getting other people to change, to get people to do things they wouldn't otherwise do. How can you motivate them to get behind your initiatives? How can you get people to change? How, when you have a great vision for how to improve your, your department that you're in charge of, how can you get people inspired to get behind your ideas rather than to fight them? These are the types of issues that we address in the Leadership and Motivation course. It's, it's a fascinating topic. It really draws from a lot of other areas, anthropology, sociology, social psychology, and we apply that knowledge to gain a deeper understanding of the world of business and the way people interact. So those are the first two majors. Uh, we'll turn this uh, over to uh, Professor Easton. We'll talk about our information technology offering. pursue what, you're, what you love doing. In my case, I wanted to spend my junior year abroad. And one of the things that's nice about our majors is that it is possible to spend, uh, a lot of our students spend at least half the junior year abroad in one of the programs. And it's a great way to get a head start on understanding something about international management, that sort of thing. So I, I would encourage you, again, as, as he did, to pursue what you're really interested in and then uh, I think the, the rest sort of happens naturally. We have a, a nice little brochure here. Have you figured out it's sort of a portable IQ test as well? Okay, so you've been looking at one side here. I'm going to talk to you about the IT side. The, um, the, the major is, the, the six core courses, of course, are the same. And one of the nice things about our undergraduate <coughs> majors is that you regardless of which track you choose, whether you're interested in consulting or entrepreneurship or IT management, 
you end up exposed to the larger group and the larger um, very very interests among the different students. So I have a lot of ITM majors that I see in my courses, but they always talk about how they enjoy in these core courses getting to work with the consulting majors and some of the people with the more entrepreneurial point of view. It's a nice way of mixing things up a little bit in those core courses. Uh, the thing that I want to mention about IT in particular is that there are a lot of different things you can do with an IT background. Uh, how many of you are interested in technology? actually use, you, you, I'm sure you all use technology on an everyday basis. I mentioned I was a French major as an undergrad. How did I get into IT? I actually, in my first job, um, I was working in a warehouse, ended up working in warehouse management, and then we brought in computers, and I was one of the people that had a sense for what is the potential for this technology to change the way we run our operation. And that's just a key skill, key point of view that you need to have to be successful in this world now because technology has such a huge impact on the way businesses are operating. Right? So if you're interested in technology, you like to figure out how things work, you like to understand what how processes work, and you're interested in sort of getting behind the scenes and figuring out how technology can make all of that work better and make help people work together and that sort of thing, then IT is something that you should consider. So you can go in a lot of different areas. Uh, one of the big things, of course, there's consulting generally in which you see a lot of different problems. And a lot of our students like to start in consulting because they get exposure. They don't know necessarily what area they want to work in. They get exposed to a lot of different companies through their first few years of experience there. There's a lot of emphasis these days on security. I'm sure you've heard about things like how, how easy it is to get your credit card information if you're not careful with it and that sort of thing, how credit card numbers are for sale on the internet and that sort of thing. There's a lot of emphasis on security and a lot of jobs available in auditing with the Sarbanes-Oxley and that sort of thing, those acts to make sure companies are secure. Uh, healthcare IT is going to be a huge thing, especially as we try to get more healthcare available to more people and to deliver it more efficiently. That has to be done with IT. Uh, system development in general that connects back to the problem solving. If you, can, if you can help solve problems in business by developing systems, um, that will support what you need to do. So in IT, you get an integrated perspective. You're really looking back at the technology that sort of has to integrate every, all of the different uh, things that come to bear to solve business problems. It's an excellent way to start your career, excellent preparation for growing your career. Um, again, to, to back up to something Mike said, you can, uh, every company needs IT, right? Every company needs IT support. So even if you're interested in finance, for example, we had one of our alums come back to address the sophomore classes a few years ago, and she was telling me she's working for a New York uh, finance firm. And she was getting an offer to, to train for their trading floor because she knew all everything about the IT back end behind the way their trading floor operated. And so they were actually interested in training her to be a trader out on the floor. So she could do that with a completely sort of unique perspective of understanding everything that was happening behind the scenes. Those are the kind of opportunities you can get even if you're ultimately um, interested in a career like a trader, for example. An IT track can actually lead to something like that. Now, I think these days, I suppose, I don't actually know if she took that offer and she might uh, be regretting it if she did, but I, I don't know. Um, this is a list of some of our companies here that recruit. This was from uh, the fall semester. I haven't updated it for the, the current uh, semester, but I just heard this morning that 43 companies are coming next week. To, I mean, there's a lot more than that coming to the internship fair. If you're, if you're not uh, aware of that, next Wednesday night there's an internship fair at the JACC. Uh, there are companies that will hire freshmen as interns, although it's more common at the sophomore and junior uh, year. But if you're interested, you can always walk through that and check out the different companies and see who's there. But there are 43 companies coming to the internship fair next Wednesday that are looking for IT majors. Okay, so it's again yeah, similar to this. A lot. You'll see all the big four up there, a lot of financial firms, pharmaceuticals, uh, retailers, security firms, 
all kinds of different uh, companies looking for IT. Uh, this, I just wanted to give you an idea again. Uh, actually, yeah, this one. Um, this is historical data on salaries. What you can see there is that, as Mike said, everybody uh, is well compensated coming out of our programs here. IT happens to be, we call it IS, that happens to be a little higher than usual. I thought I'd give you a, a current look, what we know right now as of last week. And I mentioned this because of the uncertainty in the market right now. What struck me is that, um, and this, this may not hold all the way to May, but but um, as of this point, 40% of our graduating ITM majors have jobs at this time. So it's been a very strong market this year for ITM majors, while some of the other mar markets are moving much more slowly. So we'll see better in May what happens with this. But we do have um, a very strong interest in IT still. And, and in IT consulting, because it's one of the things when, when companies are laying people off, they actually, to some degree, have to go to consultants more in some cases because they're lowering their own staff. Um, Mike already covered the core requirements here, so I won't go over that. In, oh, I was expecting that to be a list of our classes, but uh, can you pull up our sharpeners requirements? The uh, three classes, I'll just tell you very briefly about the three required classes. You can find them here in your uh, pamphlet as well. It's, uh, first of all, application development. That's the course that I teach. In a way, it's like a uh, intro to programming, but we're not really training our students to be programmers. Okay, The IT majors here don't go out and write code and, and sit in cubicles and produce uh, software, really. What you're doing is interacting with people. You may very well have to interact with people. Nowadays, it would be people perhaps in India, perhaps in China that are writing code for your company, what you need to know is how to develop that, how to put that together to have some understanding of how those, what those people are doing so you can write the requirements and review them and that sort of thing. So that's what we go over in application development. Systems analysis and design, that's a course that looks at how the techniques for charting the flow of information through a corporation and how to store that information effectively. You know, this is often referred to as the information age. We have to store that information, retrieve that information effectively in order for uh, us to make a good use of it, right? So this is kind of all about that. How do you design systems that can effectively do that? And then networking and security is a fun class. We have our own ITM lab in the lower level. You might notice that sometimes it's kind of just behind the wall from the bottom of the central staircase there in the Accenture ITM lab. And we set up our own networks in there and test them, probe them, put, put uh, security uh, probes on them and that sort of thing and, and do a lot of hands-on work so you understand the security. So those are the core courses and then there are a number of, of options that you can pursue. So that's what I have to say about the ITM major. If you have any questions, I'm sure Mike or I would be happy to take them. Hey, there we go. Is it possible to take some of the classes that are um, more focused on the specific areas? If you're, say, a finance major or an accounting major, can you integrate that into the other majors as well? Or do you have to pick, like, the other majors have free electives, I think, and, and these would be fair game for that. Is that correct? Uh, yes. There are some that we sort of protect because right. um, we need the capacity for our majors, but to the extent that we can open them up to the college, we do that. So especially the entrepreneurship courses right. are popular yeah. among uh, all the majors. And the international management is another one that's popular for the whole college. Yeah. Um, what do, uh, do graduates do, uh, well, after they graduate, do, do they tend to go to graduate school or do they tend to go straight to the workforce? Or? No, uh, definitely in, in business, it's not straight to graduate school. And that's because the, the next degree in business is an MBA. Right. 
and none of the good MBA programs will take people directly from an undergrad program. That's different from people going to law school where that would not be unusual or medical school or whatever, but absolutely they go to work typically. Uh, the good MBA programs require typically a minimum of three years work experience and uh, five in the really elite ones. But that, that just speaks for MBA, though, if you want to go to grad school. Like, you know, a lot of our students do go to law school, and of course they can do that right away. We have an occasional student that gets a PhD as well. Mike, <laughs> we have a question for you. A lot of students will come in and say, why do I want to be a management major? I mean, anybody can be a management major. That's what my friends tell me. Yeah. Why don't I want to major in accounting? And it's all management? obvious, too, right? It's just all obvious. <laughs> Everybody knows how to be a good manager. How, how would you answer that? Yeah, that's, that's easy to answer. Uh, if, if being a good manager is obvious, why is it that more than 50% of new businesses fail within the first year, and something like 60, 70, upwards of 80% fail within the first five years? There's got to be something that differentiates the businesses that work from the businesses that don't work. And I think that is powerful evidence to dispel what I consider to be a myth that management is obvious and there's no need to study it. It's actually a discipline like every other. There's, there is a knowledge base. We know what makes a great manager, and we know what makes a lousy manager. And that is useful and vital information. We can train you in the difference. So it might be true that, uh, that once you are exposed to the ideas, you think, wow, that makes a lot of sense. But by no means does that mean that that would have been intuitive to you, and that that's what you would have done in the absence of the training. Uh, so I, I think management is, is as valuable, certainly, as, as any other discipline. The other uh, response I give is that uh, uh, management is a very ubiquitous discipline. It applies to everything. You know, accounting, very specific. If you major in accounting, you're learning a specific set of skills that are most applicable in an accounting setting. If you learn management techniques, that means you can get things done through people. And I can't think of any job anywhere in any discipline where that wouldn't be valuable. If you're an attorney, if you become a physician, if you become an architect, if you become a social worker, those are non-traditional business disciplines. For every one of those things, management is important. Basically, everybody becomes a manager at some stage of their life. Even those, you know, if you're a lawyer, you'll eventually manage the firm. If you're a physician, you will run the practice. Every, if, even if you're an accountant, you're only going to do entry-level accounting yourself in the first few years, then you're going to be promoted, and all of a sudden, you'll be managing junior accountants. To me, that's one of the, the neat things about this discipline. Everybody can benefit from a knowledge of the basics of management. That's my, my answer to that. Right, and the flip side of that is that it means that you can really apply for almost any job coming out of, out of your training, because they, all of them need these sorts of Yes, sir. Uh, what would be some entry level jobs that people get at an entrepreneurship or consultant? Uh, we have them listed there on pages six and seven at the top if you're in the, the, uh, the management part of the brochure. But, uh, but to answer your question, uh, a lot of people do go directly into small businesses or family businesses, especially for the entrepreneurship major. Uh, some people have gone, and in fact, I think this is, this is one of the better entry level jobs you can get into leadership or management rotation programs from big organizations. If, you can, if you're lucky enough to get an offer from, say, General Electric, say, we want to put you in our management rotation program where you'll spend six months in this area, six months in another area, that's a signal that they value you highly. And I'm really thrilled when we can place our, our majors in those types of, uh, of jobs. But, but the better answer is it's really a broad set. There is no one simple answer to your question. Basically. You can get any type of business job with either the entrepreneurship or the consulting. But if that, that sounds good. If the leadership rotation sounds interesting, we should go talk to a GE or someone like that, uh, Johnson and Johnson, if they're there yeah. uh, next Wednesday. Um, yeah, I think they both hired our, our majors into right. rotation programs, leadership development programs. Recently. I think Whirlpool has one as well. Yeah, Whirlpool, a local company just down the road in Benton Park. All right, anything else? All right, uh
you're always welcome to come talk to Rob or I if you think this is of interest to you. I'll be happy to give you further information at any time. All right?